Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. This is just a quick overview video of a new experimental 54 millimeter um, motor that I've been working on. Uh, it's just this is just an explanation of the parts of it, how it works, just so people can see it, um, get an idea of what's inside and everything. So I'm just gonna show all the parts of it how it goes together, how it fits up, and then later on, in a certain amount of time, I'm sure there'll be a couple of static fire videos that I'll post, but uh, yeah. So I'll start off with the um, nozzle here. This is just a pretty standard uh, piece of graphite, I believe it's C3 grade. Got a um, nice little tapered convergent section that rolls right in there. Nice big, slightly overexpanded divergent section for um, higher altitude flights, keep the efficiency. There's two little O-ring grooves cut in it. Uh, these are just a couple high temp uh, O-rings that have been uh, put into place. Those stay in there really nicely. Now this whole nozzle fits into the chamber here. The chamber is just pretty standard, 6061. It was cut from uh, some Schedule 82 inch, and that is starts off obviously obviously oversized by about a quarter of an inch. And I've turned it down to 54 millimeters or two and one eighth inch on the OD, and the ID is uh, I believe 1.93. So that gives us a wall thickness of, of, of around 100 um, thou on each side. And I believe it's the exact number, I believe it's rated for is something like 600 PSI, but this is a slow burning motor. Uh, chamber pressure is max only like 400, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's nice and lightweight because of the thin wall. But anyways, so our nozzle just slides in really nicely like this, those o-rings. I'm not going to push it down all the way yet because we need the last but not least piece which is the retaining ring. Uh, same material, 6061. Uh, it's been threaded on the inside just as I forgot to mention outside of this is threaded. This is, this is a 20 TPI thread and they, uh, they fit pretty well. I've got a little groove in here, which I've snapped an O-ring into. That's pretty deep and it nicely seated because, I mean, this shouldn't happen, but in the rear event that gases do leak out of this gap here, I don't want the O-ring getting blown out and in front of the nozzle and then shot out that way. That wouldn't be ideal. So it's nicely pressed into this groove here. Basically, when you're putting it together, as you can see, the nozzle's not all the way in yet. But you we'll screw that on. It's a really nice fit. And you can feel when it hits that nozzle. And then you just screw it down till it bottoms out all the way. Just like that. And there's a nice seal made between the nozzle and the front wall of the retaining ring. So it's good because it's sealed in both radially and axially. So the, hopefully these two O-rings will do most of the work, but you also have the pressure of pushing the nozzle forward, which is compressing the seal in the front here, further strengthening the whole, the sealantness of the entire system, which is good. So this is, the exit here is a little bit oversized, so hopefully the flame won't run right into it, mess it up too badly. And this whole assembly here, fits just nicely into the rocket which I'm using, which is the Goblin. Here it is in the 54 millimeter mount. It's the Lock Goblin. And it fits really snugly in place. Two engine retainers will hold it right there. So, um, yeah, that is the motor and how it works. Uh, I've just made this quick video so I can send it to anyone who asks and I don't have the motor with me, but yeah.
This is it, the uh, new DaVinci 54mm experimental rocket motor. Thanks for watching.